your book, in the new book, Six, uh, Your Dream Visions, you say that a person's uh, dream visions are very important and very personal. And I personally uphold the privacy of my dreams as uh, they are personal. And you, you also suggest that uh, dream visions should be shared only with those who can be trusted. Uh, well, as tears, we share dreams on Skype and Facebook. And uh, that is good. But, but what I want to ask is, uh, does the mere fact of being with no presentation make one uh, trusted? Uh, seeing that uh, many people come and go for whatever reasons one cannot fathom. So, we're keeping your, your, our traditions to ourselves, uh, which uh, reflect our personal and not a collective uh, journey. Would, would that help protect the individual against unwarranted intrusions? Uh, I ask this because uh, actually no one has a, a crystal ball in order to read the minds of uh, the persons you meet uh, uh, and you share with. So this seems to put a damper on the on the, this aspect of sharing dreams. What do you say about it, Greg? Okay, so. From all that, uh, Charles, are you asking uh, about the idea of sharing dreams? Is that basically it? Yeah, whether it is whether it is proper uh, to uh, to share one's uh, inner visions, you know, given that uh, it is conditional meeting. Uh, uh, to share with the trusted people. But how do you trust people? How do you uh, trust people on Skype, on Zoom, and all the like? So what can you say about that? Well, personally, I don't see it a whole lot as trust. We use that idea. Um, I just kind of look at uh, what makes sense. Some people I'll share it with, uh, some people I won't. It just depends. Uh, I use discrimination, but at the same time, sometimes I take the risk to see uh, how they will react uh, accordingly. And it just depends. And, uh, you know, uh, I've shared many things with many people and uh, uh, I tr you might say I trusted them, but all of a sudden they misunderstood because they didn't take the time to understand. So all of a sudden they got funny. And uh, this happens all the time. Happened with Paul too. There's, there's no perfect way in creation. Things come and go. It's like the wind, you know, it comes and goes. And so you just do the best you can. And Paul had many students and he trusted, you know, you might, you can say that he trusted them. Well, Dr. Roger Hinkins, uh, uh, John Roger Hinkins uh, took his stuff and created Messiah at the time. And so again, that's just one example. And, and it's all okay. It's, it's whatever it's going to take place because every time somebody creates something, it becomes an experience all its own to be recognized for what it is, if you can recognize it for what it is. And so all those years, and when I came in as an example with Paul, and then through all those years uh, with Darwin and Harold, uh, as the takeover, they, they did the takeover. Well, that was an experience, too. I needed to see that, too. That's why I was to stay there. And just really, really see it. Uh, and eventually uh, create comparisons so people can t see it too. But, you know, most people don't want to see it. So sharing your real side experiences or what we call dreams, uh, they're experiences like here. You decide how to do it. I, I pick the ones that uh, make sense with whatever is taking place at the moment. Um, 
and uh, I don't need to have a real side experience. I just see what makes sense. I'd rather perceive it from the is what's already there. You see, it's not that the is so-called tells me something or whatever. This can happen too, but yet it's already there. It's like in the library, you have books on the shelf. You know, the librarian doesn't have to tell you where the books are. You just go in the library somewhere and you grab one and you the books are already there. So this is, uh, you know, anybody can do this. Uh, but again, most people, their personal life is very important to them. And this is where, you know, as, a, as an example, the corporation uh, basically has been shunned to do this. And no one's under any obligation to do this. No one has to share anything. No, nobody's, nobody should feel guilty or obligated. That's not the idea. It's just that you want to take the, you want to be a risk taker. Do you want to share and um, et cetera? And you become, like I just wrote a group, the witness. You become a witness to this to where people become more aware. I like the impossible challenge of doing something in this world uh, that no one else will decide to do because it's about awareness. And I see the struggle that people are going through to become aware. It's huge. It is really huge. And so this is why I've created many projects. And so for people to get involved with, to better understand what's going on, instead of just being literalized and just thinking that, oh, I heard that, I watched the news or somebody told me and no, oh, now I know it. You see, that's, that's where it stops right there. It's like information in your computer, but how is it assimilated and, and uh, affects your real awareness to where you can see and be better? That's the biggie. So again, it's a choice. Uh, that's all it is. But many of these things uh, have been shunned. And uh, again, uh, no one's under any obligation to do any of this. So we're in the risk taker mold and mode. And, um, you know, the world controllers, the human farmers don't like it. They don't want people to realistically wake up, so they're constantly going to distort things. And the new presentation uh, will become distorted, too, in its own way, uh, simply because that's just how things are in creation. So you got to pay attention. you got to constantly pay attention, and this is where it is now. There is no future here. There's only now. Life is now, but there is a future in creation and it's not a good one. And that's the forever and infinity and all these things that people hear about and what have you, the so-called absolutes that are created that are fallacies. No, it's not that. It's an isness and to be recognized. And it's that's all there is to it is recognized. It's not literal. It's not intuitive. It's not insightful. But those things do a step at a time lead to that to where eventually you do see it but that's not it and even when you do guess what that's not it either so more so than the real side experiences what is there more so because it's all invisible it's an invisible reality that is more real than anything in creation but you have to see it so that's a starting place and just again each person decides do they want to be the risk taker do they want to step up and take on something they never have before? Do they want to get past their old routines? Well, this is what the real side and your so-called dreams are showing you. But they can only give you the hint, just like you as a teacher in school. You can, you can give the lesson. You can instruct the children. But you can't make them. You can't live their lives. You can't make them do it. And you can't realistically support them Oh for what they have to support themselves with. That's their work. Yeah, so again, it's choice, isn't it, Charles? So, uh, you know, I have fun with it and I like to hear the experiences of others. It's fun and I learn a lot too because there's just, you just keep on adding to it and you decide, you know, how much of this adventure and recognition you want to handle. 